What's going on guys? It's Pat Daly with TrueTransient.com coming at you from Jackson, Wyoming. I got David Waller here, regenerative agriculture specialist. That's me. And Tree Whisperer. Uh, if you want to learn more about David, check out this video right here. It'll be either here or there. Um, today we're going to look at what he's got going on in his house. Basically he grows food without soil. Is that right? Pretty much. Correct. Okay. In a nutshell. Very... In a nutshell. Without further ado, let's go inside and uh, check it out how David grows food, no soil. It's pretty wild. So let's hop in there and let's do it. Let's grow. Let's grow. Yeah. So this is a uh, aeroponics tower. It's not technically a um, what someone would call a true high pressure system, but it's one of the most convenient systems for like home space and growing indoors. So super efficient, super low energy requirements, mostly automated, everything's on a timer. Um, yeah, nutrients right in the water in the bottom reservoir. There's nutrients a, in the water, so. Yeah. So yeah. this, there's no soil at all in this no. whole thing? Nope. Okay, so it's basically just aeration? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So, I mean, obviously plants need nutrients. They're gonna, they need to grow and they just need basic requirements. And it's so simple. We actually have it in the cubby right here. Oh. Bam. So it's super easy to the get ottoman. to. Bam, That's right in the ottoman. Farm lifestyle right there. Right? <laughs> Where do you keep so your nutrients? nutrients? okay. Yeah. And it's got um, uh, just a mixture. So you just blend these two. And it's got really easy to follow instructions on there, on the back. Like this one's the nitrogen, calcium, and iron. And then you pour that in, mix it up in a gallon, and then dump it in there. And then this one is, it, it's, it's quite a bit more. Oh yeah. But um, yeah, everything you basically need. And then there's a pump in here. So you can see the, the roots actually hanging down a little bit. And there's a pump that's attached to a center tube that runs through all the way to the top of the tower. And then that water rains down. There's a bunch of holes that are going through each section. And so as the water comes up this tube, it just simulates rain directly to the roots. And so now they're getting oxygen, way more oxygen than growing in the ground. Um, they're getting regular watering, but not over watering. A lot of hydroponic systems, they're sitting in water. And so, yeah, they have like abundance of you know, hydration and nutrients, but they don't exactly have, um, you know, oxygen, you know, and then you got to have an oxygen pump in the water. That's, you know, constantly doing that stuff as well. So, okay. yeah. And then right back in the reservoir, you just got to check to make sure it's, you know, has water in it and you're good to grow. So, this year, this season was kind of experimental to see what we're, cause we're growing in Jackson, Wyoming. So different elevation, really, really short growing season. So we actually started this tower with another, a second tower um, outside on our front porch. And we wanted to know what would grow at what rate with amount of sunlight and the conditions it's in. So as we can see coming out one port here, we have about, you know, three or four different tomato vines coming up that are trellised um, up this window here. They're already producing. And then, you know, simple move inside once the got a couple windstorms. And that's what's convenient too about having a backup plan is if, if we're at work and we get hit by a hailstorm or even like more common a windstorm, like all of a sudden there's this mysterious gust <laughs> that came through yeah. Jackson, it's like boom that would have annihilated our crops. But since we had moved it indoors because we had a frost warning, we totally avoided losing everything. So we completely harvested one towers, brought this indoor, and now we're continuing with the tomatoes. And then right here we now have- is that, is that, is it necessary to, can you just have this inside all year? Yeah, yeah, okay. totally, totally. So what was the decision in having it outside? Were you just experimenting? Great. No, that was a great question. Yeah. So experimenting because what seeds do is they roll up their genetic code depending on the environment that they're exposed to when they're growing. So they roll up their genetic code and pass on benefits that will help the next generation through its seed survive this climate. So we wanted seeds technically 
in the long run so that when we end up planting outside, they're like already adapted. Gotcha, so you wanted the good genetics in the code that's mm -hmm. based on the environment. And then you use those seeds going forward. Exactly. Boom. Breeding, seed breeding. Yeah. It's awesome. Okay. So yeah. And then what else we got here? We got peppers growing right here. Some indoor grown peppers. This is the cayenne, yeah. Mm -hmm. And awesome. then we have jalapeno right here. Mm -hmm. This is the jalapeno plant coming out. It's kind of intertwined with this borage flower, which we just um, deadheaded all the flowers because we sell them to a local restaurant. Right, and that's super interesting. You mm -hmm. sell, how much is each flower? Uh, 95 cents a flower is what we sell for. And it's kind of like a gourmet thing or something? Yeah, I mean, it's super delicate. It looks incredible. Some of the leaves, it varies between blue and pink. And then there's tie-dye flowers that come through and they're just like incredible to look at. Borage flower. Cool. And that's, people eat that in yeah. the dish. It's not just a garnish. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. A lot of people think it's a garnish, so they don't eat it. Uh, and then Rebecca kindly asks them to eat it and they, <laughs> they're like, wow, the they're like, I didn't know that was edible. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a huge part about what's missing from a lot of cuisine nowadays is a lot of people don't know what an edible flower is. If it has, I mean, all these have medicinal properties. Planting this, we were in it for the medicinal purposes, not knowing that a restaurant would actually want it and like start selling it. So you got herbs here? Yeah, uh, we got bergamot right here. Uh, we have sage coming in really strong and healthy. This is like awesome. We have basil, which we trim from all the time. Like almost every day we're trimming from basil for dinner dishes and stuff like that or salads. You got mint here. No, this is lemon balm, right? Yeah, lemon balm. What is this, this thyme? So yeah, when you're sauteing stuff up, that's good. Get the butter nice and hot, throw in some fresh stuff that you literally just clipped. Right, it was like five feet away. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we got chives coming out there. Yeah. What else? We got more peppers growing in the back. Basically, we transplanted these peppers from another tower. Okay. Uh, we also have evening primrose growing out right here. It's flowered, what, twice? Yeah, it's flowered twice, and you gotta get it right after it flowers because it like flowers and then dies. <laughs> okay. So, what's going on? I'm interrupting this video to make sure you click that thumbs up button if you're enjoying it, and be sure to comment below what you think of the video and also what you want to see next on this channel. All right, without further ado, let's get back into the video. Boom. How do you go from a seed to this? Like, obviously, it didn't start out as this. Did you start growing somewhere else and then transplant it, or how does that work? Yeah, you just take this little guy here, and the bottom of the rock will, will fit. It'll just slide on the steel here, yeah, like that. And then I'll just literally slide it in the port. These are the other ones that can be used, yeah. but these are just way easier to take in and out of the tower. And this is vermiculite. Okay, and that, where do, what do you do with that? So after you put the seed in here, you literally just go like this and cover it up, just to give it a little shelter and something to grow into. Bam. Uh, okay, and then you just put the seed in. Mm -hmm. Wow. Bam, and then okay. it'll germinate. You can either pop it right in the tower or you know, keep it in a tray and then it'll germinate. And, gotcha. Yeah, piece of cake. And then you can see this dial right here. So this is how everything's, this is how the lights are automated. This pops off and you can just put a regular lid on if you're growing outdoor. Without um, the lights. Without the lights, gotcha. yeah. Which we, if we're growing outdoor, we don't use these obviously. And so we're able to extend their shelf life because we're not using them every single day, every year. Right. So just makes it kind of convenient. And this whole thing comes apart, so. And that, is this a certain type of light, like a UV or LED? Um, LED, yeah. LED. Yeah, and then down here runs the pump. And so they streamline this timer to where all I have to select is indoor or outdoor. Wow. And it'll Simple. give it the exact time 
that it needs. This is called a tower garden? Yeah, this is the tower garden home. There's the tower garden flex, which this is a 13 gallon uh, base and the a reservoir and then the the flex tower actually has a 20 gallon reservoir wow. and so it comes out and which is actually cool about it is it technically has like a shelf because this is flat yeah. and so if you had like potted plants you could set those along the base of it and like you know oh, grow cool. stuff around it or like if you want to attract um pollinators and predators then you could grow those in pots and then, you know, whatever like ladybugs like. So they're gonna come to scope out whatever you planted that attracts them and they're gonna kind of maintenance your, the rest of your garden for you. Wow. You know, flat around so you would, you would intentionally attract predators? Mm -hmm. Well, for what purpose? Um, to kill pests. Ah, yeah. Gotcha. So like um, butterflies, you know, ladybugs, the common stuff. And that's probably a benefit of this is that you don't get pests, it's mm -hmm. indoor. Yeah. That's like a huge. Yeah, it's huge. Because <laughs> yeah, that's a huge deal with gardening, farming, mm -hmm. pests, weeds. You don't have any of that, right? Yeah. And I mean, you can get stuff. People do, all, you know, they'll have uh, white flies or, you know, something kind of get in their house. Or maybe it's a damp and they're growing in their basement and it gets like a mold or a fungus. And um, so you still have to create an environment and then always have redundancy in what you're gonna have for your um, pest control. Like we use um, neem oil, yeah, safe for consumption and all that stuff. And that's another reason that we got the, uh, the water machine is because we want that 2.5 acidic water. Right. And we can spray that on plants and that will, you know, no fungus will grow in that type of environment. Pests will die. So you know. the water that you put on the plant is very important? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the water that's on it and then the water that's in the tank. Obviously you have to have your pH right, and which comes with a tester kit. This whole thing comes with water testing. So about once a week, you just take a scoop, you know, put a couple of droplets in there, mm -hmm. see where you're at. And then if it's like too high or too low, you just add some base or some acid and it evens everything back out Sweet. and then base and acid and this is all from that same company yeah tower garden yeah and what got me excited about it is seeing that kind of infrastructure on how scalable this is mm -hmm. and nasa actually did research because they wanted to know the most effective way to grow in space and it was aeroponics not this same system, but the general rule of thumb when it comes to aeroponics. Right. So you're looking at 90% less water usage and on average 33 times the growth or 30% fast, For, faster growth. Yes. Yeah. Versus soil. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Can you think of any negatives to having this like versus soil? Yeah. Um, well, it just kind of ends up being an even exchange when it comes to like, what are the downsides of this? Like when it comes to cleaning this out. So I harvest everything, which is, uh, you know, pretty easy. I just pull everything out of the, you know, rock wall and then throw everything into the compost. Um, but then disassembling each one, if you were to scale this, we're talking like all the time you would be, you know, cleaning these things. You'd have some of them growing stuff, if you were to have a bunch of them. Yeah. Right. Like so. maybe every six months. Okay. So that could be a whole project in itself. It's just like, okay, time to break every single one of these apart, clean them, right. reassemble them, replant them. That's like maintenance. Whereas if you're growing on a similar scale, like that amount of volume of vegetables, right? And you were doing it in soil, you would still be turning beds. Yeah. So you'd be adding compost, you'd be adding amendments, you'd be, you know, mixing it. And then right. you'd be taking wheelbarrows down, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, dumping compost down. The more yeah, beds you more, have. What kind of more backbreaking stuff. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, exactly. Definitely okay. heavier lifting, um, stuff like that. And I, I'm all for soil, um, but I'm also for backup plants. Okay. like you know, a tornado ripping through the middle of America and wiping out 50% of our corn and soy and wheat. <laughs> Which just happened? Yeah, right. that was recent. Right, okay. Yeah, so it, it's stuff like that where um, 
I'm all for growing soil, but right now we're depleting our soil 10 times faster than we're replenishing it. So if there does come a day where it's like, hey, we no longer can grow in soil, like I wanna be prepared for alternatives, utilizing technology, you know. Alrighty, thank you for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, just as I enjoyed making it. If you wanna see part two, we did film a lot more. Uh, we meet David's wife, Rebecca, and she and David go over how they make money from this system. So if you wanna watch that video, go ahead and click the link, the card right here. Also, we have a link in the description to watch that video. Otherwise, I'll catch you later. This has been Pat Daly with TrueTransient.com. Peace out, thumbs up, I'll see ya.